Hi friends, welcome to Stay Stitching. My name is Carla and I am glad you are here. Today, our next installment of the great module Sew Along is fabric. The fabric we've chosen to go along with our patterns and how we chose the colors to go together. Before I get started on that, welcome to those of you who have come over from Whitney's place. It's crazy being attached to someone with that big of a YouTube channel <laughs> when you're like me and you just randomly make YouTube videos every now and then. And anyway, if you're expecting a lot of sewing, beautifully done sew alongs, expertise, and a regular schedule, let me tell you right now you're going to be disappointed because I don't do any of those things. So for those of you who don't know, um, I am a special education teacher. I'm setting a timer here because um, I meant to set this before we started filming. <laughs> There's another example of my, um, my YouTube skills. Come on. And um, so I just do this for fun. And I admire everything Whitney does over on her channel. And I had been admiring her modules. And I hit her up with the idea a few months ago of doing a module challenge. I was just pretty much the idea girl. That's really mostly what I do is come up with ideas and then wander off, squirrel. And Whitney loved the idea and graciously agreed to do it with me. And she has been doing all of the, all of the basic legwork. She's just a powerhouse of efficiency. And so, um, welcome. And I hope that you will hang out with me for a little while. So today I'm going to show you the fabrics that I chose to go along with my patterns that you have already seen. And I am going to try to keep this video well under 35 minutes. So if I sound rushed, it's because I don't want you to have to sit here for 35 minutes and listening to me. Come here. Oh, I was trying to get my favorite cat um, and show you. You guys see Nutmeg all the time because she's easy to catch. Zane Gray, he is not easy to catch. He wants me, you know, to pet him and he wants to sleep with me and he wants me to pet him, but only when he wants to. And so he's sitting just out of reach on the stairs where he can keep an eye on me because he's always, if he's in the house, he's usually within six feet of wherever I am. That doesn't mean he's going to let me catch him. So, um, but he does let me look at him. Okay, let's get started. So the first topper that I talked about with my pattern video was the Cashmere at Appleton hack. So the Cashmere at Appleton is Cashmere at's very first pattern. It's a wrap dress. It took the plus size especially or busty sewing world by storm and pretty much everyone made a Cashmere at Appleton. It was a great first pattern for Jenny. It was a huge success and it looks good on everyone. I have been threatening to make the Appleton top for over, oh gosh, pretty much since her pattern came out. And so I am finally going to do it. And it's a, the Appleton is an easy uh, dress to put together and the top will also be easy. Um, and the, the neck band, it, it is, it, you might think it looks tricky, but it really isn't. And Jenny has a really good, um, blog post on it and there may even be a video i can't remember but i've made the appleton three times already and so it goes together easily i think natita natita from natural dane has a sew along maybe with the appleton so appleton fabric i got into mayfield fabric for this i went upstairs and went through the bolts and found some things that I thought I wanted to sew with. I mean, it's up there. It's not doing anything. It has to be used at some point, right? So this is an art gallery knit. 
It is from the collection Maker. It is 95% cotton and 5% spandex. And this color is called Make Patches Shabby. And I just love the mid-century look about it. And I thought that um, this busy pattern would go well with the wrap top. And it's also a really nice weight jersey with a lot of good stretch and excellent recovery. And so if you find art gallery knits anywhere, I can highly recommend them. They are a beautiful knit, um, durable, fun and easy to sew with. And of course, really, there are only a handful of um, design houses that I would put in the same league as art gallery um, with all of the cool designers they have and the amount of beautiful fabrics that they print. So that's going to be an Appleton top. My second top is the Christine Johnson um, swing shirt. This is number 505. And I'm making this in a fabric without any stretch, which is okay. It, it's, you can do that because it includes um, linen, lightweight wovens, wool jersey, silk velvet, and rayon blends. So I chose this Robert Kaufman chambray. This is the Union Light. It's 100% cotton. And it is 57 inches wide. Oh, that art gallery knit is... Oh, it doesn't say on the bolt. It's wide. It is 60 inches wide, I would say at least. Um, but denim is like my favorite fabric the way that it washes, the way that it wears, the way that it um, you can fabricate it, the things that designers have done with denim in the past 200 years, mostly 100 years, um, is when we really started getting into denim. Probably not 200 years. Levi Strauss, I think, really made it big. But um, it's just so American. It's iconic. It goes with everything. It looks good on everyone. And it's a really great fabric to use as a base for anything that you want to throw at it. And this is not denim. It's chambray. But it's a beautiful, lightweight, drapey chambray with that classic white um, running through it. And I think this will be gorgeous for um, that top. I think it's going to swing beautifully. I think it's going to be lightweight and not too hot in the summer. If you were to get, if you were to have just worn this and then, you know, it gets hot in Colorado, the temperatures can vary wildly. Um, and I think, and this will go with anything in my wardrobe. I also think with this swing shirt that I would wear it belted from time to time. And this nice lightweight chambray will belt nicely. It's not going to pooch out too much and make, you know, big like wrinkles or anything. So that's what I've chosen for that top. And of course, this, this top will go, the only thing that it won't go with is if you've messed up your silhouettes, you know, but even so you could put that on top of Palazzo pants. Um, with a tank top underneath and it would be gorgeous. Um, you could put it on top of um, a big uh, sheath, you know, and let it be your topper. So I just think this will go with virtually everything in my closet. The only thing that I probably wouldn't put this with would be a big gathered skirt. You could tuck it in and this is lightweight enough, but still you would have all that fabric hanging down like halfway down your thigh underneath your skirt. I don't like a bunch of extra nonsense, you know, to deal with when I'm dressing. And I have tons of denim shirts, tons of them, seven or eight, that I could easily tie in a knot with a, you know, or belt or something with a gathered 
skirt that wouldn't be as voluminous as this, but this Robert Kaufman Chambray Union Light, and I think the color of this is denim. No, this one's just Chambray Union Light. Oh, indigo. Indigo is the color on that. I, I'm almost certain you can get any of these Robert Kaufman fabrics pretty much anywhere. Um, the art gallery fabrics, they do go out quicker because they have such a big turnover with their designers and they're always bringing new collections because art gallery is really quilting. It's quilter run, not garment um, construction sewer run. Robert Kaufman does have quilting prints, but I feel like they are a garment um, fabric company. And so that one I bet you could pick up right now and I bet they'll still be selling it in five or 10 years. Next top is the Do It Better Yourself Club Dibby Rosa top. Now, one of the things I think about when I'm choosing fabric for a pattern, this is an ultra feminine pattern. It has flowy feminine lines those curved edges. There's nothing harsh about this. This pattern tells me that the fabric that I choose needs to be similar. I do like juxtaposition where you mix hard and soft deliberately, but for this pattern, I really would go with a fabric that is visually soft in terms of pattern. And I personally, would not make this in a harsh graphic design, like a black and white or anything with big geometrics on it. Personally, I wouldn't. And I have those, like the, the one that I just showed you. I probably would not sew up that art gallery in this super feminine silhouette. What I would sew it up in is this art gallery. This is a soft, light khaki. Um, you, I don't know if these are feathers or leaves, truthfully. I think, I think it doesn't matter. Um, but it's flowing, it's feminine, it's organic. It feels right to me, even though it's a stripe. I mean, technically, it's a stripe. It feels right to me for that pretty fabric, for that pretty pattern. And so, and this will go with all of my bottoms and, um, you know, a denim jacket or that I could throw that topper on top of this if I wanted to. This is from, again, I said art gallery fabrics. This is from the Wanderer Knit Collection. Oh, it's leaves. And the name of the fabric is Gust of Leaves Silver. And again, I think this is at least 60 inches wide. And uh, so those are leaves. There we go. There's that one. Now, you can't wear the two art gallery tops together. They don't go. They don't go in any way, shape, or form. They don't go color-wise. They don't really go, uh, they definitely don't go visual-wise, but both of those will go with both of my bottoms and with my topper. And so if you've been stuck with your uh, with your module thinking that everything has to go with everything. Well, if you're not going to wear them together, I'm not going to wear the Appleton wrap top with the Dibby top together. They're, they're never going to be together. So as long as I have a bottom to go with that top and I have a topper to put over top in case it's chilly, then I'm good, right? So if you make a bottom, you want all three of your toppers to go with it, uh, your topper, your tops and your topper to go with it. So the bottoms need to be more basic. Okay, my next bottom was the Colette uh, Celine skirt, and I am going to be making version one, and I'm going to be making it out of, I mean, I probably have to stand up for this one. Oh, wait. This delicious Robert Kaufman denim. I bought this to make the cashmere at Aim, uh, Ames jeans, but this has 2% stretch, I think. This is Robert Kaufman Laredo Stretch Denim. Let's see here. It's 95.5% cotton, 3.5% poly polyester, and 1% spandex. And that is not enough to make the cashmere at Ames jeans. 
it is enough, I think, to make the Dawn jeans and I think another Megan Nielsen pattern. I think, I think I bought another pants pattern from Megan Nielsen with the intention of using this fabric. Um, so, do, you know, this I highly recommend Robert Kaufman denim. It's pretty easy to find. It's not terribly expensive. Is it Japanese selvage denim? No, but you know, where are you getting that? Or um, Cone Mills denim? No, but that's hard to come by as well. Um, this is really easy to get to, but do not choose a stretch jean pattern for this fabric. Um, this is 47 inches wide. And I think, let's see, does it say the color? It's an indigo. And I think it's going to make a beautiful Celine skirt. And I think I will get so much wear out of that. This beautiful dark denim on that really rather, you know, sophisticated pencil skirt. I think they're going to look fantastic together. And as the skirt ages, it's just going to continue to look better and better. I mean, you know, it might not be as formal as it would be out of this right from the start, but it's going to look good for its whole life. And that's what I truly love about denim. Um, if you could see the jeans I'm wearing today, they're a wreck and they're my favorite jeans. I didn't make them. And they're even cheap. They're apartment nine jeans, but I love them. Okay. Our next one, I talked about the Allegro pants. These are just such great classics to have in your wardrobe. They have an ankle length bottom, which is really hot right now. You can show off all your fun favorite shoes, which I love to do because I have an obscene shoe collection. They're incredibly comfortable. The leg is not too big. Um, I need to go down a size the next time I make them. As I mentioned, I'm going to use Karina's Karina from um, Lifting Pins and Needles, um, her yoga pants tutorial um, to make the waistband, and I'm going to add the pockets this time, and I'm going to be thrilled to have these in my wardrobe. And for these, I'm going to make... Out of this fabulous, this is Robert Kaufman, Essex yarn dyed denim. It's 55% linen and 45% cotton. So that cotton, um, it's 43 inches wide. That cotton helps make this a little less wrinkly. This is also a very full bodied fabric. Um, definitely heavy enough for pants and never going to be see-through or, you know, nothing to worry about with this fabric. Um, and this is, um, it just says Essex yarn dyed denim. Oh, and I forgot to bring down the bolt um, for my top. So hold on. I don't know how to pause this. Troy's just going to either run up and get the bolt, the, um, that pleather, the pleather. While he's getting the pleather <clears throat> for my topper, I will talk about my next the fabrics for the other module that I showed you. So the first thing was the Cashmereette Concord tee. That is going to be one of these three beautiful knits. Okay. So I don't know. I haven't measured. Yeah, I, I just haven't decided. But one of these three. I'm kind of liking this for the topper. But uh, I'm thinking it might turn out to be this. This is a nice heavy knit. And this is super drapey. Um, but so it's going to be one of those three. The Butterick top is going to be one of these three, probably this one, but maybe it, I haven't decided. And then the topper. Is that it? Yes. Thank you. Troy's pretending to fall down. <laughs> he pretends to fall down all the time. When we were 
young and courting or freshly married and he would be walking in front of the car after I got in, he would always pretend to fall down. And you know, the first time I thought he actually fell down. And, um, and of course we live way out in the sticks. So there was always dirt roads and everything. Anyway, that's just him 31 years later, still pretending to fall down and making me laugh. Um, so to stay on the fabrics that I have in my hand, it's going to be the cashmere at Concord tea, that McCall's, that Butterick tea, and this topper out of these three fabrics. One of the, each of those is going to get one of those. Don't know which is which right now. Okay, this, oh, this is what I'm going to make the denim jacket out of. And I love this fabric. I used this fabric as the um, as the sleeves on my tamarack jacket. It was I used a black quilted fabric from Joann's, which I don't recommend. It's very stiff. I would not make a. It would work better if the jacket wasn't too big. I made the jacket too big. So when you have a stiff fabric that is also too big, then it becomes even more of a problem because then it like it's sticking up like this, you know, uh, on your shoulder or whatever. And so, um, but it is a gorgeous looking jacket. I, or anyway, I'm digressing. Um, this is the sleeves on that jacket. And I always thought that this would make a fantastic denim jacket. It's just a good basic black, um, reptile embossed, fabric. Ugh. I could also make purses or backpacks or pretty much anything with this. So that is my capsule that I'm going to be working on. And then now back to the second one that I'll probably do later. Um, for the top, let me see if I can get myself straight here. Yes. For the third topper, I am going to use this beautiful vintage fabric. Now this fabric is truly vintage. I believe it is probably from the 50s. It's only 36 inches wide um, I, or 60s. It's from Pennies. This is a four yard piece. It's 100% cotton and it was a dollar. So I'm saying 50s or 60s. And I just think that it goes gorgeous, beautifully with these three. And I think it would make a beautiful top. So this top right here. And then, we'll leave that there. For the bottom, this is the fabric, my first bottom. This fabric is the one that I got started the whole module on. I adore this fabric. This is also vintage fabric, only 36 inches wide. It's stunning. Well, that might be, nope, that's 36 inches wide. It's so beautiful, you guys. I have enough of this to make a top and a skirt. I could make a skirt and a dress. I could make, I think I have like seven or eight yards of this and I adore it. So, um, I, this is the fabric that drove this whole, um, thing and look, look how gorgeous these two are together. So even though I have a lot of this, I'm kind of afraid to cut into it. And then the final thing, oh, that's, I could do this, this, this is what I was planning to do the skirt. And then the final thing was the Style Arc Anna Pant. And that, I chose this beautiful fabric. This is a very drapey, heavy rayon. I mean, I would say rayon linen based on the drape. It's very heavy. Um, it has beautiful drape. And um, it's a gorgeous, 
silvery, taupey gray. Um, I just love it. And it goes beautifully with all of these. So any of the top, all of the toppers would go with this. Not all of the tops would go with this because these two can't be worn together clearly. But I would have two tops to wear with this skirt and a topper. And I am thinking this one might be, I don't know. I don't know. But anyway, those are my fabrics. And I don't know that I was super helpful in terms of helping you pick out your fabrics. All I did really was show you what I'm doing. If you're a true beginner, definitely follow what it says on your pattern. All patterns tell you what they think you should make. Um, the designer tells you what fabrics would work well for your pattern. For example, the Anna Pant, French Terry, Velour, Soft Linen, or Cotton. And so, you know, I go to my stash and I pick something out that would work well for that. And on Instagram, I saw a lot of different ways that people were taking photos of the fabric for their modules. One gal had hers all wrapped up into rolls and in a little basket. You can see visually that this is a pleasing combination. I've seen people do the mood boards. Um, I've seen people take photographs of their folded fabrics in a stack. <coughs> do something that looks pleasing to you. These colors look very pleasing together to me. And that's one of the things that helped me choose them. Um, even though these can't be worn together, they both have a different shade of the exact same color of green. This one is a little bit lighter than this, but this, this one has this color in it. So even though these wouldn't be worn together, it feels modulely and capsule -y to me um, because they do look so good together. If you have any questions, please put them below and I will do my very best to answer them. If I um, can't answer them, then I'll try to find the answer or steer you in the direction of the answer. I would definitely start with stash fabrics and try to make your module work with what you have to begin with because I think using up our stash is fun. It may not be as fun as buying new fabric, but it's very satisfying and it will make you feel really good about this process. And then if this is your first module on your second one, you can start to add in, <clears throat> maybe you don't have enough solids. And so when you go shopping, you can, if you have like a fabric like this one that you just adore, and you're gonna use this as the base of your module, then when you go shopping, you can pull your solids to go with this and you'll have a jumping off point for your module. And that is usually what I do. I usually start with either a beautiful print, that's what I did on my first two modules, and um, I'd like to finish those, those aren't finished, so I might be trying to finish those during this whole thing. Um, that's what I did for the first two. For my one that I'm going to sew for the great module sew along, that one I wanted to use the three, I had four fabrics that I wanted to use. The um, chambray, the denim, the linen cotton, and the um, faux leather. I knew I wanted those to be in it because I wanted these pieces to coordinate with virtually everything in my wardrobe. The other two, the two art gallery knits, I pulled based on the pattern that I chose, what I thought would look good in that pattern. And I'm going to go now because I'm not going to keep you for 35 minutes this time. Thank you so much for stopping by. I hope you are having so much fun with your module. It has been incredibly fun to watch what all of you are up to and you're very inspiring to me. And I just can't wait to see the next thing that you come up with. Take care and have a fantastic day.